So let's go ahead and get started. Um, perfect, thank you. All right, so welcome to this webinar um, about SDG Lab. Uh, let me start by, well, just a quick introduction. My name is Brock Fanning, and I'm a team member um, on the FCD, FCDO project. Uh, I've been involved with uh, many, many of the data modeling and metadata trainings and uh, working with SDG Lab and, and getting data and metadata onto SDG Lab. So let me quickly start with what is SDG Lab? Um, just as a quick introduction. Um, SDG Lab is a tool that was uh, developed by UNSD. And while I'm talking, uh, I will go ahead and demonstrate the website itself. Um, it, it's a web uh, application and it is designed to show global and national data and metadata alongside each other. Um, and so let's start with that. What is global and what is national metadata uh, and data? So the, uh, with the SDGs, uh, the countries, um, just let's, the countries, uh, of course, maintain data and metadata on all of the indicators. And many of you who are here today have been involved in that process, um, either with data or metadata or both. Um, and, if, and so this is what we call you know, country data or national data. The, with each SDG indicator, there is a, an international agency assigned to the indicator. Um, and those we call the custodian agencies. Those are uh, responsible for compiling data for all countries uh, globally. So that data that and metadata that is compiled by the custodian agencies, so we call the global data and metadata. And many times the sources and methodologies are going to be very different between uh, the global and the and the national um, uh, data, and so there is the potential for discrepancies and differences. And so SDG Lab is, was developed by UNSD to um, basically help to make, that, make those differences transparent, to help to improve the quality of the data and metadata, and um, to increase the comparability of it. So, that's a quick overview of um, what SDG Lab is. Um, and I'll go into a bit more today. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to use SDG Lab uh, for analysis. We'll also go over how to upload metadata to SDG Lab and how to upload data to SDG Lab. Um, and Please, um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and unmute and, and speak up. I can't see the chat while I'm presenting here, so um, that's totally fine. If you'd like to uh, ask a question, just, just go ahead and unmute. So to start off, let's talk about uh, using SDG Lab for analysis. So as I just mentioned, uh, each indicator in the SDGs has a custodian agency. For example, <clears throat> World Bank for 111, uh, FAO for 211, and so on. And these agencies submit data for all countries uh, using their own sources and methodologies. And at the same time, the countries uh, are compiling data 
and they are submitting data with their own sources and methodologies. And often there are differences, as I mentioned. Um, the, 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 the global data may frequently be uh, used what, uh, with um, like estimates or modeling, those, those kinds of things. Whereas the country data um, may be from you know, more precise surveys or, or national sources. Um, and, and if for those of you who are who have been involved in the SDMX um, trainings, so either the data training or the metadata training, may you remember this distinction between uh, global and national reporting type. Uh, this is a, a very fundamental um, dimension that's added to every bit of SDMX data and metadata for the SDGs. And the and this is an important distinction for SDG Lab because this is what allows uh, the SDG Lab to show both global and national side by side and to show uh, comparisons. And, and we'll look at what that looks like in a, in a bit. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look over at um, SDG Lab and and take a look at the analysis side of things. Um, first, just a, a couple, of, a few notes uh, to guide us here. That first note is that ideally the national and global data will be equal or very close, and we'll see in a second. Um, when, when that happens. Uh, but if they are apart, if they are, if there is a discrepancy, if they're far apart, um, SDG Lab should make this very clear. And we want to make sure that these discrepancies, if there are any, can be investigated. Uh, that it's not enough just to show that there are discrepancies. We also want to help to explain them and um, and correct them. Uh, and the metadata that's also in SDG Lab is perfect for this for this purpose. Okay, so let me um, okay. Welcome. I'm just. Um, uh, in admitting folks to the to the meetings, we've we've just gotten started, and we are now going to demonstrate SDG uh, using SDG Lab for analysis. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, speak up. Okay, so this is the um, homepage um, after logging into SDG Lab. It is a it is a, a login kind of system, and um, talk a bit more about that uh, at the end. Uh, but you can see that it is you have this dropdown for country, and then there is there are a few different categories that you can look at for data availability. So right now, for example, look, we're looking at Afghanistan, and data availability is either global or country, which means it's showing all of the data that's country and all of the data that's global. Uh, it, and so we're kind of seeing everything. For our purposes, when we're trying to look for discrepancies, we really want to see both. We want to see only those series that have both global and country data. So I'm going to switch over to both global and country. And so SDG Lab here is telling me that there aren't any series uploaded yet for Afghanistan um, that have both global and country. Um, but I can switch to another country uh, that, that I know has global and, and country data. Uh, so taking a look at Burundi, um, you can see that it, SDG, SDG Lab has 13 series so far uploaded that have both global and country. And 
and this is sort of a um, scattering of those series right here. So let me open up the first one. It's indicator one, two, one. And I, I can see the blue is global data and the green there is country data. So in this case, uh, there is a bit more global data than there is country, but the there is no discrepancy here. The, the 2014 data is the same, um, or it's almost the same. You can see that there's a little bit of a difference. You can scroll down to the um, table to see this precise numbers a little bit more easily. And so you can see that there's slight difference, but basically it's the same. Um, it's very, very close. So let's take a look at another indicator. Go on to the next one. So again, um, you can see that the numbers are very close. Um, there's a bit more global. Again, there's an extra year here, 2018. Um, but for the other years, it looks like the, um, the numbers are nearly identical. And moving on to the next indicator here, we'll just do one more. Uh, so in this case, this is um, proportion of total government spending on education, uh, one, one A2. You can see that there's there's some discrepancy here. So we can see that when the country data is reported here in these three years, it is a, a lot higher than the than the global data. And SDG Lab also helps to call attention to this with this red line, which uh, is intended to show the level of discrepancy um, between. Uh, between those years. And so the discrepancy is sort of going up because as you can see, the, the country numbers are going up, whereas the global numbers are kind of going down. So, so there is definitely a discrepancy there. Um, and that would be a good thing to, a good starting place to investigate. Um, and so this is where the metadata can come in. On the right, we see we have all of the sections of metadata. Um, those of you who have done the metadata training could remember um, these sections in the word template. All right, so um, a good one to look at probably is definitions, concepts, and classifications. And um, this might be a good place to look to see if there's maybe any differences in um, you know, the sort of the overall what's being reported, like what what exactly these numbers represent. Um, so we can see in the global on the global metadata um, that this the definition here is that it's total general government expenditure on education as a percentage of total government expenditure on all sectors. Um, on the national side, we see that this is the share of state budget allocated to education, health, and social protection. So that could be one possible reason for the discrepancy that this, the national numbers are including health and social protection, whereas the global numbers are only on uh, education. Um, but who knows that, that that's sort of a starting place. And so this is uh, an example of uh, a, a place to, to get started and trying to track down the reasons for these discrepancies and sort of adding transparency to to these numbers to help to you know move towards improving the uh, overall uh, quality of of the data and metadata it's very possible that the um country that the global data is is incorrect here and the the country data is you know ha has more precise uh, a source and so that 
country, the global data maybe needs to be updated or, or vice versa. There, there could be some other issues, so. All right, so that's a quick overview of using SDG Lab for analysis and kind of showing what's the, the sort of the purpose, the overall purpose of it. Um, before moving on, I just wanna pause and see if there are any questions so far. Um, any questions on what SDG Lab is or how it's used uh, or the analysis that we just looked at? Okay, well, I'll move on. Um, feel free to um, uh, let, let me know in the chat or just unmute and ask any questions if any if anything comes up. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is to look at uploading metadata to STG Lab. So, um, Again, man, many of you here may have been involved in the, the uh, metadata authoring trainings. Uh, and for those of you who weren't, I'll give a quick um, refresher on the just the, the, the overall um, steps that are involved in authoring S SDG metadata. Of course, there's there are many ways to do it, um, but we have developed a machine readable Microsoft Word template, which we recommend as one way to uh, maintain your metadata. Um, this is, importantly, it's machine readable, so it can be used to convert your metadata into um, other formats. So um, this metadata template is available for download. Here, the, the link is here, and, and I'll um, make sure that these these slides are are circulated. Um, and I'll demonstrate this in just a moment. Uh, a, couple, a couple of notes about this Microsoft Word template: that some rich text features of Word can be used when you're writing your metadata. For example, you can use bold, italics. You can put in tables and headings. You can insert images. Uh, you can have lists and footnotes, and you can also add equations using Microsoft's equation editor. Uh, and that one in particular is of note is because if you were in the metadata trainings, you may have um, remembered that we recommended not to use equations and to use images instead. However, in the last just couple of weeks, uh, we've pushed up an improvement to the the conversion tool, and it now supports equations. And so that's um, an, a good step forward with this tool. Um, so the equation editor is actually usable now. Uh, all other rich text features cannot be used, and that includes things like colors, like uh, background colors, font colors, anything like that, those will not make it through to the um, SDMX and to STG Lab. So those should be avoided. Um, shapes as well, there's a, that's a Microsoft Word um, feature where you can add shapes like rectangles and things like that. Those won't be used. Uh, changing the font also will not make it through. So those, um, that should be avoided. Uh, and basically, any uh, any features that aren't in this this list at the top uh, probably cannot be used. And what will happen is the the this authoring tool will just sort of ignore the the features that it doesn't recognize. And so it won't hurt anything, but it won't be used. It won't make it through to to the conversion process. So it should be avoided. All right, so. Um, uh, let me actually, before I move on, just quickly demonstrate this template. So I'm going to load up the the blank version of this this word template. And so here it is. Um, 
you can see it's got some introductory text, and then there's what we call them the attachment section, where you can choose uh, the reporting type. And this is important for uh, STG Lab, as we mentioned earlier, the point of SDG Lab is to compare global and, and national. And so um, that's an important item to check, to, to, to choose there. Uh, you can also choose the series that the metadata applies to, and it could be more than one. Uh, so you can use this button to add more than one series. Um, the reference area, so you know which, which country it's, it's applying to, and then a language that the, that the metadata is written in. All right, so now um, moving down to the submission form, this is where you actually put in the metadata. And so this is where you just start typing. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you can use um, like, Example, you can use um, you know the features like bold, italics. Um, those will make it through, uh, and and the other features I mentioned before. For example, maybe we can demonstrate a a, um, a an equation. Let's go down to like a method of computation. It's commonplace to put equations. So if I wanted to use an equation, I could do um, insert Microsoft's equation here. Um, like you could try um, doing a fraction. Um, so like any kind of equation you might want to add. Um, so that's. And so you just fill in the metadata as best you can, uh, doing as much, um, you know, filling as much as you can. Uh, of note is that you don't really need to do the top level ones, the like zero, um, one, two. Uh, the, it's more important to fill in the actual items uh, underneath those, but. It is an option to do the top level ones as an alternative, just to, as like a summary. Okay, so that is the uh, process for authoring the metadata. And so let me just save what I've, what I, what I've done there and uh, move on to the next slide. Uh, so now we'll talk about converting it to SDMX. And, and first, just why do we need to convert it to SDMX? That the reason um, is that SDG Lab only accepts SDMX data and metadata. Uh, the only way to get anything into SDG Lab is for it to be in SDMX format. And that's the reason. So what we need to do in order to get our metadata on, S on SDG Lab is to convert it into SDMX. And um, part of the benefit of that word template is that we have a tool developed which sort of goes along with that word template and is designed to um, convert that metadata into SDMX. And so let me demonstrate that. Uh, as you'll see, the, the tool provides an, a PDF version, which is useful for proofreading or publishing, if you if you if you would prefer, and um, and uh, well, a bit more about this in a moment. But the SDG Lab only accepts global series codes, but we'll talk more about that in a, in a sec. So let me first go to the um, the tool that is right here. It's called SDG Metadata SDMX Converter. So what we need to do is to 
take the file. This is the file that I just edited. And I'm going to just drag that in. And let it um, process. So after it's finished, it downloads a, a zip file. Um, let's just put that in the same place. Okay, so now I've got the zip file, which I can extract here. And um, so inside of that zip file, we've got, uh, like I mentioned, a PDF and an XML. So let's look at the PDF first. This is, um, as I was talking about, this is just for proofreading purposes or for publishing, if you'd like to publish it. Um, and so you can see it does have the two items that I had filled in. And um, so the, the no poverty here got bolded and, and italicized because that's what I chose in Word. Um, so what, that's what I mean by that those features are supported. They will make it through to the SDMX. But if I had used a color, for example, it would not have made it through. So that's just something to be aware of. And then you can also see that, um, as promised, the uh, formula did, did work. It, it made it through uh, using the Microsoft Word editor, uh, uh, equation editor. OK, so then the other file is the XML. This is what you'll actually need to, to upload to um, SDG Lab. And so let, let's just take a quick look at that. Um, this is not really tended to be human readable, but just so you can see, it, it's this is the SD, SDMX formatted metadata. Uh, so it includes like the name of the series, the reporting type, um, and any of the metadata, for example. So this is how it how it processed the the goal, and and, and of course here's how we have the um, the formula that we added. So that then would would be uploaded to SDG Lab, and we'll go over that as well. Um, but one quick note is that um, SDG, Lab, SDG Lab only accepts global series codes. So for example, if I'm in the drop down menu uh, for series, I can't select like the first option, which says national series. I can't select that option. Um, it won't let me, uh, or at least it, it won't let me upload it to SDG Lab. And if you have any custom series in this list, uh, maybe if you used a custom DSD, uh, you, you can't use those either. Uh, SDG Lab only, only accepts the global codes. And we'll talk about that more with the data. So let's um, show uh, a demonstration of uploading. So I'm going to go back to SDG Lab. And I probably will need to log in again. Okay, so if I'm going to upload, then I, I go over to this import data metadata section. Okay. And um, this is a place where you can either you en enter the URL of your, your data or metadata, or you can drop in a file. So let's, let's drop in a file. So I've got this. Um, I've got this ready to go. This is an ex just a quick example. It's already something that's already in um, SDG Lab. Um, this is um, from from Lao from Lao PDR. Uh, this is a, a an example of the metadata for one two one. Uh, so I'm going to drop that in. Oops. So what I did there is I tried to drop in the, the Word doc and I uh, got that error that Word doc is not supported. 
So that's the reason again that we need this tool. So what so what I have to do is um, actually first go over to the converter tool and drop it in there. So once again, it's sort of converting everything. Um, and we'll save that zip file, extract it. And so, so now we have our XML here. And so this we can we can drop into SDG Lab. So now I'm back over in SDG Lab and I dragged it over. I see the confirmation page um, and I can hit process. And so now it's been imported. And so this was for uh, the Lao People's Democratic Republic and indicator 121. And so if I want to go see that, I can um, look it up and just take a look at. Okay, so now I can find the indicator here. And I can see that I have national national metadata there for that for that indicator. Okay, so that's um, a quick demonstration of uploading metadata. Um, one, uh, well, two quick notes. If you are using the Microsoft, the, the word-based authoring tool that I just sort of demonstrated, then those, then these next two notes um, aren't, aren't gonna be an issue. However, if you choose to generate your SDMX in some other way, which is always certainly possible and 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 fine to do. Um, if you if your platform generates SDMX or if you write some custom um, tool, that's that's totally fine. Um, but a couple of things to be aware of. One is just a, a quirk that SDG Lab doesn't accept single quotes in the metadata. Um, if you if you have single quotes, then it will throw an error. So you just need to use this sort of HTML. Uh, code instead, um, and it will work out the same. And then the other thing is that very long SDMX messages may time out. Um, when, when you use the word-based authoring tool, it's just one indicator per file. So it's not, it's not gonna time out, but it is possible, of course, to add 10, 20, 30 indicators, or even all of your indicators into one SDMX message but that will time out if it's too many. So watch out for that. If you, if you try to do too many indicators at once, uh, the STG lab upload process will fail. So before moving on to data, um, after kind of going over metadata, just wanna pause and see if there are any questions so far um, on metadata uploads. Uh, for those just joining, um, we have gone over uh, an overview of, SD, of SDG Lab. We've taken a look at um, the it's, if it's possible. If you could mute mute your audio if you're not asking a question. Did, did anyone have a question? Uh, so I was just saying that we've um, gone over an overview of SDG Lab and we've gone over how to upload, uh, how to analyze um, data and metadata in SDG Lab and then how to upload metadata. And we're recording this session, so if you've missed anything, um, 
it'll be it'll be available. And so if you have any questions, feel free to um, you know, write in the chat or or um, let you know or just unmute and ask questions. It's fine. Okay, so let's move on to data. Um, just a bit more uh, to go over here. So when it comes to uploading data, of course, the, the process for cre creating your data is a, a, a much more complex than with metadata, um, at least from a technical perspective. Uh, with metadata, you're just you know, gathering the metadata and then typing it in. But with data, there's a much more involved process and many, many of you may have gone through that data modeling training and so have some experience with that. But it, it does um, require a lot more work to get set up and modeling your data uh, for SDMX. Um, if you haven't done this, this training, you can, you can contact UNSD uh, for more information and just let you know we're also planning to do an e-learning course for this for this process. Um, but this is an important and uh, um, it, you know one of the one of the most challenging parts of it. Um, so we won't be just we won't be going over this part today. Um, but um, we will talk about how to once you've done that modeling, how to convert your data into SD um, or how to upload the data to SDG Lab. So the next step after you've modeled your data is just convert it to SDMX. Um, because again, SDG Lab requires SDMX. You can't get anything into SDG Lab unless it's SDMX format. Um, there is the common approach, which we, which we talk about in our UN, UNSD trainings, and that is to use SDMX converter and DSD constructor. Um, these two tools can be used together to um, generate the STMX. And mainly the STMX converter is what does that. Um, of course, if your platform supports STMX output in some way, uh, like .stat or OpenSTG, then you can certainly use that approach instead. But one quick note is that the STMX format must be what's called structure specific. It's uh, one of the types of STMX. Um, <clears throat> so once you've got your your data converted into STMX, you can upload it to SDG Lab, but there are some challenges here, um, and so there, this is important to talk about. One challenge is the global compatibility, and that is that SDG Lab will not accept STMX that contains any national codes, and this is because the point of SDG Lab is to compare the national with the global. But if the national is using codes that are not in the global, then there, there can be no comparison. So it will not allow any uploads that contain national codes. So for example, if you're using subnational reference areas or custom series codes or custom age codes, um, your data will fail when you try to upload it. And this is very challenging because, of course, it's a lot of work. It would be a lot of work to uh, maintain a completely separate set of data, which is which is filtered to only contain global codes. Um, that would be uh, difficult to use or difficult to maintain. And so we've developed this tool available to help remove remove um, the uh, national codes from SDMX. And I'll demonstrate that um, in just a moment. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. So let me head over to the browser. This is another uh, web, web tool. Um, it's called STG SDMX Global Filter. And it's similar to the others where you um, take your, meta, your data, drop it in, and, and then let it process. So I have ready a cup, an example here. Um, 
This is um, some data uh, from Kyrgyzstan. And this is for indicator 111. And so I'm going to just drag this over into this global filter. Um, and actually, before I talk about the results here, let me just to, to show you the, the, the point of this, quickly try dragging this into SDG Lab. So I'm going to try to upload this to SDG Lab. And you can see this says there were some errors. Please review this file. And if I, if I open that, I see that there were some area, errors related to the reference area. Yep. You have a question? Oh, sorry, I thought I, had, I thought someone had a question. Okay, so there it shows these errors here um, and does not let me, um, and you can see that it looks like some custom reference areas here. So now going back to that global filter tool that I, that I just used, um, you can see that it, it came up with some results. It said nine series keys had DSD violations, uh, and were removed. DSD violation means it was not a global, it was not in the global DSD. And so it kind of lists out those that were removed here. Um, the, and this is, these are the same that showed up in that error message. Um, and then it has this download button where I can, where I can download the, um, the file. I just need to save it. Um, so if I, I save it here. Let me just rename it. Um, so it's a it's it's been changed. It's it's uh, the, those cuts those national codes have been removed. So if I go back over to SDG Lab and drag it in the filtered version. See if it works this time. Going a bit slow, I guess it's processing a lot of a lot of data here. There we go. So now it worked successfully. Um, so that was sort of a, an additional step that could be required if your data has national codes. Um, and that's and that's very common. So um, this tool, I think, will be useful in removing those before it can be uploaded to SDG Lab. Uh, the next challenge, however, there's there's another challenge, and that's content constraints. Um, and that's uh, there are a set of content constraints for the SDG indicators um, to ensure sort of data quality and, and to ensure comparability also. Um, which enforces that particular dimensions and attributes need to have certain values. And that depends on the series. So for example, in the series, um, this SI, COV, uh, maternal, the sex dimension uh, has to be F uh, for that indicator uh, for female. Um, that's just sort of, this is a content constraint. and um, SDG Lab enforces these, and so if you tried to load that that series, but the sex dimension is not F, then it will again it will throw an error. And um, the same tool can help with that. So I, I can quickly show an example um, of another indicator. This is another one from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, let me put in the the drag that over and then process it. And so again, it says there were some errors 
This is the SDG lab error. Um, uh, actually, so I guess there are also, it, 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 it has a problem with the um, uh, reference areas again. And so it stops there. It doesn't go, it doesn't go further. But this tool that we have, this filter tool, um, will actually give you a bit more information. So if I were to drag that over into this filter tool, take a look. Um, so the results were that um, there were some DSD violations just like before. And you can see those down here with the these reference areas, but also there's a content violation, which that's this constant content constraint. And so it's, it gives you the precise details here that in this series, the unit measure has a disallowed value um, of this local local currency. The, allow, the only allowed value is US dollars there, USD. Um, and I guess that's that's to ensure that it can be compared with the global, the global um, data. So this uh, content violation, uh, this content constraint, need, constraint needs to be met. And you'll notice that there's no download button because this um, these need to be fixed manually. So you, you need to work these out on your own. These, um, it's, you know, those can be changed in your, in your data itself. Um, and would improve the quality of the data. Uh, but of course, you may need to change the, um, the numbers. Uh, for example, in this case, it's the unit measure that was, was wrong. And so if I open up that file, um, you, know, you, you probably would be editing it maybe in a spreadsheet or in some other way, but just for the purposes of demonstration, if I look for that, particular series, I can see that it has a unit measure of lo local currency here. And so I could change that to US, US dollars. Um, of course, if I did that, then I would also need to go into each observation and you know correct these numbers. Um, so this is not something that the tool can sort of do for you. It just tells you that you that there's an issue, but just to demonstrate, um, I can go back in, and since I saved that change, I can go ahead and try again. And this time, you can see there are no content constraint problems, uh, only the um, reference area issue. So I can I can download that. So this is another um, common challenge before uh, data can be uploaded and that is to again to make your data fit these content constraints and that tool again is a helpful um, a helpful thing for this process because it tells you exactly what needs to be changed um okay so the um the uh the process for uploading data actually has sort of just demonstrated it. Um, but this is a sort of a summary of what those steps were. Uh, first, to generate the STMX um, and whatever, whatever um, process you want to use, such as using STMX converter, as we do in the trainings, or perhaps you have another, another workflow for generating STMX. Um, but once you have your STMX, is to use this global filter tool. Um, and again, the links are in the slides and we'll send these slides out. But you can use this global filter tool to just confirm that it's going to work, um, that it fits the, that it matches the global DSD and that it uh, doesn't have any content constraint problems. And the filter tool can also remove any national codes that it, you know, for you so that you don't have to maintain a separate version of your data. And if you need to, then you update the data. For example, if there are any content constraints, then you'll need to update the data and then, you know, 
kind of go back to step one and try again. And then finally, you can upload to SDG Lab just like I just demonstrated. All right, so um, let me pause there again and um, see if there are any questions. We're, we're sort of up at the end of the webinar. Um, I do want to talk a bit about the login system for the um, SDG Lab, but, but first, any questions about anything uh, so far? Um, feel free to uh, unmute and ask questions or put anything in the chat uh, if you have any questions on uh, SDG Lab in general and metadata uh, data or um, the analysis. I, th I think I hear a question, but it's but it's breaking up. Maybe maybe the chat would be better if that's possible. Easy. Okay. So yeah, check it, Lena. Hi everyone. Okay, so um, for those just joining, we're actually just just wrapping up. Um, yeah, Marcus. If, if, if you can. Oh, sorry. Um, we're we're just wrapping up and um, have sort of gone over the um, overview of SDG Lab okay. and. Um, Sorry. Oh, you didn't want to turn but I want to say enough. I think just got to mute. Sorry. Okay. Um, but I don't think that, uh, we're we're in the question and answer phase. Um, but I haven't heard any questions yet. Um. So let me, since we're actually at time, let me go ahead and um talk about the login. Um, the, the, just very, very, very briefly, we've been talking about how, you know, how you can upload your own metadata, upload your own data. Um, and this is, um, this is certainly what, what we want to encourage. Um, but you do need credentials in order to log in to SDG Lab. And so you can see, like, I've got mine saved in here. And I can log in, um, which which is how I'm able to um, upload. Uh, and I my user account I think has access to like all the countries since it's sort of an admin account. But you you would get an account that's just for your own country, and so the um, so you can be sure that no, no one will upload something for your country by accident or anything. Um, so. What I would recommend is to contact UNSD. Um, if you are interested in using this tool and uploading your data and metadata, uh, and they will set you up with a, um, uh, a login um, for this. So, so I th think that wraps it up. Um, unless there are any last questions, I will go ahead and and close the meeting. Any questions? Oh, I see. Yes, the recording will be will be shared. Um, it should be ready um, within an hour or so after the call, and then I'll send the recording out to the same group that, that received the invitation, and uh, as well as the slides. So yeah, for anyone who joined late, don't worry, the, the whole thing was recorded and, and we'll be sending it out to the same group. All right, well, I hope, I hope this was useful. Um, I would um, be happy to answer any questions that if you think of them later, um, you know, over email, um, feel free to reply when I send out the, the uh, recording and the slides.
but uh, thank you for your attention. And um, I will go ahead and close the meeting. Um, thank you again.